The New York Times' Nate Silver now lists Alaska as the Democrats' best chance for picking up a Senate seat now held by a Republican. That's where the three-way race among Democratic candidates Scott McAdams, Tea Party Republican Joe Miller, and write-in candidate Lisa Murkowski is tightening. A recent poll shows Miller dropping to third place with 23 percent. McAdams jumping up to second place with 29 percent, only five points away from Murkowski's 34 percent. And there is still that 13 percent who are undecided. The poll has a margin of error of 4.4 percent, which means McAdams and Murkowski are running a virtual tie. And only one of those names is actually on the ballot. So how did a man who was a virtual unknown mayor of a small city in Alaska suddenly gain momentum in the last week of campaigning to become the Democrats' only hope to grab a Senate seat away from Republicans? Over the Joining me now from Anchorage, Alaska, Senate candidate Scott McAdams. Scott McAdams, you've certainly gotten your party's attention, finally. Here's what Senator Robert Menendez, who leads the Democratic Senate Campaign Committee, had to say about you. We believe that uh, Scott McAdams actually has a real chance of winning this race. Uh, Mr. Miller has obviously plummeted uh, because it's about ideology versus about Alaska. Lisa Murkowski wanted to privatize Social Security. Scott McAdams is all about Alaska, so I think he has a, a real opportunity here. Scott McAdams, should the Democratic Party have been helping you more during this campaign? You know, Lawrence, uh, from day one, this campaign for us has been about Alaska. It's about putting one foot in front of the other, running a fundamental campaign, talking to as many Alaskan voters as we can possibly contact. And so it's great to have the, the National Democrats on board uh, here at the end. It's very helpful as we move forward to win this race. But, you know, we've, we've run a great campaign. Uh, we've had hundreds of volunteers putting in thousands of hours. We've raised $1.25 million, which by Alaska standards is quite a bit of money. And so we've done great on our own. It's great to have some support at the end, but we believe we're going to win this race. Now, in the Hayes research poll, Joe Miller has fallen to third place. Sarah Palin has her own reasoning about why the race is tightening and why her candidate's at the bottom. Let's listen to Sarah Palin. CBS reporters in the affiliate up there in Alaska on tape are saying, let's find a child molester in the crowd as a supporter for Joe Miller. Let's blast that. Let's concoct a Ron Paul moment there. Let's find any kind of chaos so that we can tweet an alert saying, ooh, there is chaos. Joe Miller got punched. Or by... That's sick. Those are corrupt bastards, Chris. Now, she seems to think that Joe Miller's collapsed because there's a media uh, conspiracy against him. Might his collapse have had something to do with what Joe Miller has actually said and done? You know, I, I think that the collapse has much more to do with Joe Miller. The fact that he's never really uh, held an elected office before in this state. I think there's a lot uh, about campaigning, a lot about Alaska that Joe Miller doesn't understand. You know, and, and of course, here in Alaska, Sarah Palin, uh, while she certainly is, an, is a national media celebrity and figure, uh, she plays a very small role in Alaskan politics. So, uh, you know, that it's it, there's certainly, she has a right to her, to her opinion. I think that, that Joe Miller, uh, his campaign, uh, where, where, he's, uh, where he's led himself, uh, has to do more with, with his own personal behavior uh, and his, own per his inconsistencies between what he says he believes and what he's actually subscribed to in his personal life is what's led to his uh, falling in the polls. Now, you say Sarah Palin now plays a small role in Alaska politics. You know that the national media believes she's a giant and a giant influence in uh, Alaska politics. Do you think that has something to do with the lack of attention the national media has paid to your candidacy until now? Well, well I, you know, I think that there has been a train wreck here. I mean, there's, certainly there is an intriguing story, this family feud between Sarah Palin and her surrogate, Joe Miller, uh, and Lisa Murkowski and, of course, her father, Frank, and this feud between the Murkowskis and the Palins. Uh, you know, in spite of all that, we've just run a fundamental campaign. We've talked directly to Alaskan voters. You know, having an Alaskan mayor who speaks the language of community, uh, who will go to Washington, D.C. and fight on behalf of Alaskans, is what our voters are looking for. So, you know, Sarah Palin, uh, certainly is somebody who's well, well known in this state. I mean, obviously she's well known all over the country. Uh, but I think a lot of people outside of Alaska would be surprised to know that she's actually less popular than Barack Obama in our state. So, again, Sarah Palin plays a very small role. Okay, I am surprised to know that. Count me as surprised to know that Sarah Palin is less popular than Barack Obama in Alaska. Does that explain her, the, her lack of popularity now in Alaska, Joe Miller's candidacy plummeting? Does that explain the anger, the near rage that we're hearing when 
she's starting to call people publicly corrupt bastards, using language like that, language I've never heard another politician use that word uh, in anger in, in any public forum the way, the way she is now. That is a new... Uh, it seems to me enraged Sarah Palin that we're seeing. Is, is it because of this collapse of this candidacy in her own state? Well, you know, there's a great irony that Sarah Palin would be so um, angry towards Alaskan media, towards press in general, considering that she's utilized press to, to launch herself in a political career, uh, including Alaskan media, uh, very well. I also think that, you know, this business of the media and blaming the media for, for the downfall of Joe Miller throughout the course of this campaign uh, is also ironic, being that, you know, nobody in Alaska knew who Joe, Mil who Joe Miller was on the 15th of May, uh, except for Sarah Palin. And, of course, when Sarah endorsed Joe, he became a national media celebrity. If it wasn't for the media, uh, Joe wouldn't have much of a campaign at all. Now, you're within, uh, you're in a statistical tie at this point in this poll, uh, given the margin of error with Lisa Murkowski, but you are actually on the ballot. Lisa Murkowski is not. She has to be a write-in uh, for people to, to deliver her the vote that the polls seem to indicate she's getting. Uh, it seems to me that if you have a, some kind of turnout operation at the polls tomorrow in Alaska, given that you're on the ballot, that is a tremendous advantage over Lisa Murkowski uh, tomorrow. Do you feel feel you have the resources you need to deliver your voters to the polls tomorrow in Alaska? I absolutely do. You know, here in Alaska, they say that Democrats have to work twice as hard to win. I say we're working three times as hard in a three-way race. I mean, nobody up here has better discipline, has a better tradition of uh, running an effective field campaign uh, than we do. Uh, nobody, in my mind, is doing the kind of work we're doing uh, to get out the vote. So, I, you know, I believe that we're going to win this race tomorrow. Uh, it's true. Elisa Murkowski is in the middle of a writing campaign. Uh, there is a certain margin of error that will be there. Uh, we believe that even if Lisa is a point or two up in the polls, we still win this race. Uh, of course, now that Joe Miller has fallen into third place, uh, I think that there are a number of rational voters here in Alaska. And you know, Alaska is not quite as conservative as folks in the lower 48 might think. Uh, we're more of a purple state in my mind than we are a red state or a blue state. Uh, I believe that rational voters, Democrats, moderates, independents are going to walk into the ballot booth. They're going to look for the name that's on the ballot, and we're going to win this race. Scott McAdams, the come-from-behind Democratic candidate for Senate in Alaska, thanks for taking time out from the campaign trail to join us tonight. And thank you for teaching me something about Alaska. Barack Obama, more popular than Sarah Palin in Alaska. Thank you, Scott McAdams. Thank you, Lawrence. Thanks for having me.